up everyone welcome back to my channel september is here august has come and gone and that means it's time to rank every single new release movie i watched in the month of august not as much as july unfortunately only three but i do have strong feelings and opinion feelings and opinions about all three of them so don't worry that'll fill in the lack of new releases now before i get started if you are new here on my channel and you are not subscribed and you love movie content and physical media in particular with blu-rays and steelbooks you're definitely on the right channel slam the wrist subscribe down below so you don't miss anything in the future click the notification bell as well as the like button so what is at the bottom of Susan's rank list? Without a doubt, it is the movie musical on Amazon Prime starring Adam Driver, and that is Annette. Okay, Annette. Where do we go with this? So I was drawn into the project initially because, number one, it's Adam Driver. I am a big fan of Adam Driver. He is very committed. He's diverse. He just excels, I think, in every single role that he takes on. Kind of like the male Charlize Theron a little bit. I just enjoy him and I enjoy his acting immensely. So when I heard about this movie musical with him in it, I was intrigued because I was a theater major in college. I enjoy musicals. Then you throw in Marianne Cotillard. She's very talented. Okay, let me give this a shot. Let me watch this. So I was very excited, settled into my bed, put it on. And I was so confused. I was so confused as to what I was watching in front of me. This movie is going to divide people because some people are going to say this is genius. It's absolutely amazing. And then other people are going to be like me and say, what the hell am I watching? What is on my screen right now? First of all, the songs were extremely repetitive. And when I say extremely repetitive, I mean the same line being sung over and over and over and over again. That is not genius. That's lazy to me, okay? That's lazy. You can't even come up with different words to put into your song. At least Lin-Manuel Miranda fills his musicals with words, okay? This one is just bottom of the barrel. At one point, the child that they have is a puppet. I don't understand that. There's a lot of symbolism in this movie, apparently. This, it just went way over my head. Way, 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 way over my head. I turned this movie off after an hour. I turned it off because I could not take it anymore. Adam Driver's character is extremely unlikable. He plays this stand-up comedian that's supposed to be kind of like... I don't, I don't want to say raunchy, but like rough around the edges, like kind of does his own thing. He does a stand up wearing a bathrobe. It's just this whole thing. I didn't like his character one bit. I was not drawn to him. I didn't want to know more. I was like, ew, you're gross. So with that and after the confusion of the child being a puppet and the repetitive words, I was out. I was out after an hour. I could not take it anymore. So if you guys have watched Annette and you love it, congratulations. Because I'm on the other side and I could not stand this film. I gave it a one star on my Letterboxd account. That hardly ever happens. But when I shut you off in the middle, it's not a good sign. If I shut you off, you're getting a one star automatically. It does not even matter who's in it, what it's about, doesn't matter. Moving on to second place, the runner-up is Free Guy. Free Guy with Ryan Reynolds. So I was kind of hesitant about even going to see this movie in the theater. But then I said to myself, you know what, Susan, give it a chance. Because I saw the trailer again and again. And then the Mariah Carey song that was all stuck in our heads at one point was playing on repeat over and over in my head. I'm like, I don't know, because I'm not the biggest fan of Mariah Carey. But I went. I went to experience it, and I'm really glad that I did, especially in Dolby, because Free Guy is nothing but absolute fun. Fun, and you can just have a great time. That is what you're supposed to do at the movie theater. You're supposed to have a great time. You can sit back there for two hours, relax, munch on some popcorn, and just be entertained. And that's all that Free Guy is trying to do. That's all they're trying to do. They're not trying to win awards. They're not trying to redefine a genre. They're just wanting to entertain you. And the king of entertainment is Ryan Reynolds in this film. I absolutely loved him and his character, Guy. He's so wide-eyed and nice and 
Granted, he's not a real person. <laughs> Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it. It's been a while. It's been out. But I thought he played the character great. I absolutely loved it. Taika Waititi as the villain. A lot of people didn't like him and thought he was miscast. However, I thought he was spot on perfect. I thought he nailed the part. So I absolutely enjoyed him. And having those two... They really didn't share any scenes together, but it seemed like they did because they have like, you know, the rivalry going on between what's in the game and what's in real life. But overall, Free Guy is just a great time. I rated this a five star on Letterboxd because to me, I didn't really see anything wrong with the film. Maybe I was just entranced in the moment for some reason, but I really honestly could not find anything wrong with this movie. So if you guys have not seen Free Guy at your theater, that's the only place you can see it, definitely go and experience it for yourself because there's even an Avengers moment in that film. And that's what got me. And it went up a little bit more in my book because of that. I laughed so hard. It's a great, great moment. But moving on to the number one spot, it is the Suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad directed by James Gunn is my number one pick for August. Now I watched this when it opened day of at home HBO Max but the next day I went to the theater so I did support and I went to the theater because I knew I wanted to highway I knew I wanted to experience the film for myself in in the Dolby theater larger than life I needed to see this and experience it on the big screen so I did both and I have to admit Ever since I saw it in the theater, I've watched it on HBO Max in full probably five more times. And then I've, I've played it when I'm working on videos, when I'm cleaning. I have it on, you know randomly on my TV playing. So I have it going all the time. So because of this reason, it's the number one. Because of the rewatchability factor for me is more than Free Guy. I feel like with the Suicide Squad, I could watch it literally over and over and over again and I don't get bored of it. I'm still entertained by it. With Free Guy, not so much. So that's why Free Guy is in the second spot. The Suicide Squad is in the first spot. What is good about the Suicide Squad? What I think is great is obviously the number one factor, James Gunn. James Gunn taking over Suicide Squad revamping it, twisting it around. He had complete control. He did not have Warner Brothers or any studio bosses in his face telling him to change things. This movie is his true vision. And you can tell because this movie is violent. It is violent. It is gory. The script, he also wrote the script. It is 100% James Gunn. He knows how to deal with characters like this and weirdos and wackos because of Guardians of the Galaxy. So he is, he's right in his familiar territory, if you know what I'm saying. And he excelled. I thought he did really well. It's very unfortunate that this movie did not perform as much as we wanted it to at the box office because of HBO Max, because of the Delta variant, because of the R rating. There's several factors, not just HBO Max. So if you guys haven't seen The Suicide Squad yet, go to the theater. Go and support the movie because it does need some help. Some things about The Suicide Squad... Eh, it's not perfect. It's not a perfect movie. Like I said, it is very gory. It does have the, you know, the little flash scene, the full frontal nudity, if you know what I mean. That little, if you missed it, you weren't looking hard enough, but it's there. Little things like that probably could have been left out to make it a more perfect movie. And how can I forget about Margot Robbie with Harley Quinn? I almost did. She is brilliant spot on perfect in this movie probably the best version of harley quinn that i've seen her perform number one she's in her red and black thank you lord she's in her traditional colors of her character red and black but not only that she just has an amazing fight scene that was so awesome to watch that is the harley quinn that we've been wanting to see violent just going for it not letting anyone get in her way. I feel like the other versions of Harley that we've seen from her in Birds of Prey and the first Suicide Squad were watered down versions of Harley Quinn. Whereas in The Suicide Squad, we are getting the real authentic Harley Quinn that we've been waiting to see. So that was extremely refreshing. I love King Shark. King Shark, Sly Stallone, I laugh every single time. I love it. I think he's absolutely fantastic. 
the actress that plays Ratcatcher 2. I thought she was perfect casting. John Cena, I could do without. I didn't really care for him as Peacemaker. Kind of got on my nerves a little bit, but I guess that is the point of the character. But one of the real standout stars is Idris Elba. You cannot talk about this movie without talking about Idris Elba. He is the focus of this film. Absolutely fantastic. Now, everyone thought this was a replacement for Will Smith because he couldn't do this film because he was under contract to make King Richard. So they slipped in Idris Elba. Not true. James Gunn wrote the part of Bloodsport for Idris Elba. And I thought it was fantastic. Great casting on James Gunn's part to put him in that role. The one also big negative of this film is the villain. If you have not read DC Comics, which I never have, but I know this because I do my research, Starro the Conqueror, the big giant starfish that they fight at the very end of the movie, is a part of the DC Comics. If you don't read the comics, you're not aware of that. So if you saw this film, you didn't know what that was. It seemed outlandish. It seemed ridiculous. But if you're staying true to the comics, which he was, James Gunn was, this movie nailed it. He nailed it. Every single detail, all of the characters, the circumstances. Like I said, it's not a perfect movie. There are things that could have been tweaked. But overall, because of rewatchability, Harley Quinn, Idris Elba, all of those elements, and also King Shark, how could I forget the iconic rip apart moment, one of my favorites in the entire movie, The Suicide Squad is my number one film for the month of August. So let me know down below, what's your ranking? What movies did you watch in August? Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.